as many of you have already seen the developers for rise of kingdoms have released a sneak peek for the next archer release in rise of kingdoms i'm going to tell you right now that this is probably going to be the mightiest governor commander okay because we have an archer garrison and defense commander revealed now at the time of recording this video we actually don't know almost anything about this commander i will cover briefly what we know about the skills that have been revealed so far because i know many of you are curious about my thoughts here so we're going to talk about that in this video but really we don't know that much about this commander which is super frustrating so we're gonna get into that but first what's going on guys cheers now if you guys appreciate hearing my thoughts and opinions on brand new content rise of kingdoms drop a thumbs up on the video and subscribe because we're so close to 75,000 subs anyway I have to complain here for uh, just a second here okay guys obviously I'm a, I'm a day late to this information more than a day late at this point at the time of recording this video and yesterday I released a video that was pre-recorded and I thought okay I'm gonna talk about the future releases of commanders for rise of kingdoms because we just got William Wallace so surely this is a safe time that I can talk about what I think is coming down the pipeline and then not even a day later like 18 hours later the devs for rise of kingdoms were like surprise new archer commanders which is like yes okay we all knew archers were coming next but like I can't believe they just randomly announced it and the way that they announced it was super annoying because we actually don't even know who this commander is and as you'll see in just a second we don't know any of the stats or numbers or anything here so we can't even make a reasonable conclusion as to whether or not this commander is going to be good or not anybody who tells you that this commander's broken is just assuming because we don't know anything about this commander at all so Lilith why would you do this okay first of all let me just let me just say obviously I am upset that I wasn't home the day that they revealed this because I would like to make videos as soon as I can and by making my prediction video I thought I was getting ahead but in fact I am a day behind but regardless the very first thing that people said when this was announced is oh my god we just got infantry we just got infantry and now we're getting archers right and if you said that yourself I need you to calm down think about this for a second okay William Wallace was revealed on June 26th and he did not come into the game until July 29th so a little over a month in between the first reveal and I gotta say guys I'm not even gonna count this as the first reveal of this commander but even if we do if we follow the same release schedule as William Wallace's reveal to implementation into the game then that means this new commander will come at the soonest on September 24th which if you watched my most recent video I literally said that that would be the soonest that we could get this new commander because that would be a 56 day window so once again everyone's like oh my god they're releasing commanders too fast no they're not they have always released commanders this fast I literally 56 day commander release windows go back to Tamiris and Edward of Woodstock from September of 2019 if you think 56 days is too fast then you've thought that for over five years at this point okay sorry almost five years okay so let me just clear the air once again and you guys know that I'm one of the first people to criticize rise of kingdoms when we have some things that come into the game that I don't like okay I'm very transparent about that even though I'm a sponsored creator I do still like to provide some constructive feedback but commander release windows is not one of them because they've been extremely consistent with that the entire time okay rant over about all that there is one more thing that I'm going to say before we get into the skills here Archer Garrison defense do you know why longtime viewers of the channel are going to know why I'm excited about Archer Garrison defense boys listen hey the last time we got an Archer Garrison defense commander in Rise of Kingdoms was Artemisia baby everybody loves Artemisia am I right oh hey yo Lilith please pl yo Lilith please make this another goth girl please make this another goth girl you have no idea how excited I would be to have a double goth girl garrison like are you kidding me can we possibly get our second goth girl in rise of kingdoms like who doesn't want another artemisia look at the way she spins the blade boys oh we're getting another archer defense garrison commander okay if you want more goth girls in rise of kingdoms drop a thumbs up on the video and let lilith know all right okay let's go over the skills here i know some of you guys wait for my video before you actually learn more about these commanders and to those of you you are the greatest of all time literal goats thank you so much but you're going to quickly understand why i'm so frustrated with the way that they decided to sneak peek this commander we literally have no data here at all because not only do they not give us numbers they use mechanics that we don't even understand okay first of all active skill aoe that's huge maybe okay and the reason i say maybe is because we'll talk about that in a second a thousand rage requirement okay mighty heals a large portion of their troops slightly wounded units okay we've already seen mighty healing in the game before it's on gajamata however if we go into gajamata in the game which uh, this is 
very annoying rise of kingdoms i don't know why you've done this the game does not define mighty healing okay oftentimes when we have terminology in a skill you can click on it and it will explain what the terminology is we do not get that luxury for mighty healing and by the way we don't get that luxury for mighty shielding either now we know that mighty shielding means that you can apply a mighty shield over top of a regular shield which implies that a mighty healing factor will occur at full strength even if it occurs on the same turn as a regular heal but we don't actually know anything more than that and if we do please tell me in the comment section below where i can get a concrete definition of mighty healing because i i it needs to be here guys it needs to be here put it in the game i don't know what you're doing okay so we have a mighty heal don't know the healing factor so is it good i don't know it could be a 300 healing factor it could be a 3000 healing factor who knows deals a certain percentage of this skills heal strength as true damage to up to five nearby enemy troops with every additional target reducing the damage dealt to each individual target by 15 percent that part is very standard now the part that people got confused about is true damage what is true damage well great question we've never seen that in rise of kings before at least not to my knowledge but according to this it says true damage is not affected by damage bonuses the attacking troops attack attribute or the defending troops defense attribute so what this is saying here is that the stats again I guess the stats of the attacker and defender are not factored into the battle formula when we're dealing damage here which as you guys know typically your attack stat it, as it goes up increases your normal damage your counter attack damage your smite damage your skill damage every type of damage of the game is you know increased by more attack okay in the same vein having more defense and health means that you will take less of that damage or uh, defense would mitigate the damage you take health would increase the amount of damage your troops can take before they get wounded regardless they're both in the denominator of the battle formula so they function very similarly although you typically have less health because of the way that you get stats in rise of kingdoms I'm not going to get into that because we've talked about that in the channel here before but basically what true damage is saying is that we're not going to look at your stats we're not going to look at your enemy stats you're just going to deal X amount of damage period and it doesn't matter it's always going to deal that much now you might be thinking oh New York that's so broken is it is it what if it's 200 damage factor it's not going to scale with stats and it's it, it's it can't be mitigated sure but it can't be buffed either so it's like maybe it's good maybe it's not good I suspect it'll be good now the reason that I say true damage might not be that good is because we've seen this type of damage in other RPGs before and I'm going to use a very weird parallel that hopefully some of you understand some of you might not but if you've played Pokemon there is a move called seismic toss okay and it has a fixed amount of damage and there's other moves in the game that do the same thing I think nightshade is one of them as well but don't quote me on that but I know for a fact that in Pokemon if you use the move seismic toss you deal whatever the Pokemon's level is as damage period that's it so that means if your Pokemon is level 100 then you will deal 100 damage to the target which sounds really good but it scales horribly because in the late game there are many Pokemon that would take maybe two or three or four hits before they actually die to seismic toss because seismic toss can't be like buffed it can't be there's nothing you can do with it right and so it's very cut and dry you deal 100 damage if you're level 100 you deal 50 damage if you're level 50 and I think true damage is going to function the same way in rise of kingdoms okay it's going to have a damage factor and it's just going to deal that much damage now the only difference here is I suspect that true damage will still be modified by troop count okay I think the more troops you have the more true damage you will deal I think that's probably going to be the only modifier for true damage okay the other modifier here is heal strength okay the more that you can heal the more damage you'll deal but really that's how I assume true damage is going to work okay so what I expect to be the case is that true damage for whatever this commander is will probably be really powerful right now but I expect it might not age very well in the same way that seismic toss doesn't work very well in the end game as your competition gets stronger and stronger and so in rise of kingdoms as power creep gets better and better this true damage number whatever it is it's going to be stuck in the past it's not going to be able to be buffed it's not going to be able to be nerfed it's just going to be whatever they decided it is to be right now okay with that being said we still have to talk about heal strength here okay because they clarify saying that a skills heal strength is equal to how many units it is capable of healing not how many it actually healed when used including any bonuses and reductions to healing okay so what this is saying is that if you pop a heal and you have a full garrison for example you're still going to deal maximum damage because it still calculates how much healing strength you would have gotten in that turn and then you know it you can't go over whatever the limit is of the of the flag or fortress or whatever okay so the only way to increase this true damage would be to increase the healing strength of this commander and there's a couple of ways that you can do that but you're actually really 
really limited because you have to understand how the healing formula works in rise of kingdoms okay now of course rise of kingdoms has never revealed the healing formula to us but the best approximation of healing that we have in the game right now comes from speco who is the developer of the rock battle simulator and what he discovered is that healing factor the actual formulas that are used for healing factor is that you take the healing factor of the skill okay and then you take the square root of the number of troops remaining in that army and you divide it by the base health plus the iconics to that base health and then you get the heal amount and then that heal amount is multiplied by the healing increase over 100 plus the healing amount itself okay so this is basically like Richard's skill where he gets extra healing extra healing percentage right I think that's on his fourth skill and so that's how you can arrive at these numbers here and he does have uh, some screenshots to show his work and shielding factor works very similarly but what we can understand from this is that there's actually no way to increase your healing amount except for having more troops okay and also you know that healing increase percentage like we see on Richard's skill and I believe this new commander has that as well so we'll talk about that in just a second but this means that the manipulation that you can do for healing is actually extremely limited like this is really limited in how much damage you can actually do and I suspect this is going to be super powerful when this commander comes out especially because it's a five target AoE right which this doesn't say it will be in a circle but I kind of expect it to be because it's archers okay and also I think that this might not age super well that's just my gut feeling as to how limiting this is true damage can't be buffed it can't be nerfed it can't be anything but the most insane part about this active skill is that based on the way Way that this is worded it looks like it will be more powerful to use tier four units than tier five units and you might be thinking omniarch that is insane what are you talking about okay but let me show you because the healing formula is weird in rise of kingdoms if you guys are good at math then you were looking at this formula right here and saying wait a minute if you're taking the square root of the troops remaining and dividing it by the base health and that means that the higher your base health the smaller the number you're going to be multiplying by the healing factor which means a smaller multiplier means a lower healing amount so just to recap higher health equals worse healing yes higher base health equals worse healing that doesn't make sense right surely this has to be wrong except it's actually not and it's super easy to prove it okay here we have two battle reports with Richard both of which have the exact same number of units 179,958 because that's how many t5s I have left in my account right now because we're in kvk but this first report is full tier five with no equipment no formation no armaments no nothing it's just Richard and his talents with tier five and this is Richard with his talents with tier four again exact same number of unit there's no special unit here or anything like that okay it's just the base tiers of infantry and if we look at the tier five battle log we go to his active skill turn 10 we can see that the healing factor from soul of the crusader is 3523 now we can go to the tier four battle report and we go to his active skill and you can see that the healing factor of soul of the crusader is 4000 1056 okay and the reason that there's a difference here is because we're using different tiers of troops and there's a higher base health stat for the tier five units we have 216 plus whatever the iconics are there were no iconics for Richard but whatever and then the tier four unit have a lower base health so the fact that I switched from tier five to tier four lowered my base health and because of the way the healing factor works a lower base health is a lower denominator which means you're dividing this by a smaller amount which means you have a resulting bigger number multiplied by the healing factor which means more healing which now we're talking about healing so would you rather heal a higher amount of tier four units or a smaller amount of tier five units you know that's up to debate tier five units obviously have more attack as well so they deal more damage but we're not talking about just healing here we're talking about true damage remember the way this is worded is that you deal a percentage of the healing strength which is how many units you're capable of healing okay and your heal strength is increased with lower base health and so with the lower base health you're gonna deal more true damage Lilith what are we doing make it make sense tier four are literally better than tier five now look 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 let me not get ahead of myself okay again tier five literally have higher stats okay so let's not forget the fundamental the fundamentals is that tier five will probably perform better but from a pure damage perspective you might actually deal more damage from the active skill at least 
with tier four units and look the fact that tier four have lower uh you know attack it doesn't even matter because we're not dealing normal damage we're dealing true damage so the fact that you're, you have less attack doesn't even matter here you can use and why don't we why stop there use tier one units let's let's go all the way to tier one we'll use tier one archers in a meta archer garrison and we will pop off with this true damage what are we doing what is this lilith what explain this to me because i don't understand this at all anyway tier one confirmed meta for archer garrisons everybody round of applause and shout we figured out the loophole on the first day ladies and gentlemen if you haven't liked and subscribed already what are you waiting for second skill this commander gains defense and march speed historically march speed on a garrison has not been very good this is good however for like arc of osiris for example where you like need to get a fast garrison into a flag and you want it to be archers bada bing bada boom here you go this will probably be faster than any infantry garrison you could march across the battlefield as well but we'll have to wait and see again we don't have numbers this could be five percent march speed and then it's like okay well that's trash right so we have no idea also it says if this commander's troop contains only archers it deals more normal damage okay so not sure what this buff is going to be here um but so far from what we can see these first two skills work in the open field guys so we have an a five target a we commander with healing and true damage okay and you have defense and march speed this is like really good and more normal damage right so again we don't know is this five percent more normal damage is it ten percent is it twenty percent is it thirty percent like we don't know if this skill is good or not is this 10 percent defense is it 30 percent defense 40 percent defense who knows we have no idea thanks Lilith. this is the weirdest way to reveal or tease a new commander because all it does is get people anxious for what's coming next because it's coming so soon after william wallace but also we don't know if it's good or not but i guess the best part about this is that this commander is going to probably counter cpo emilianus which is still on the on its first cycle of mightiest governors right like its first four cycle run or whatever it is and so if you're worried about that rally well great news the counter's already been announced anyway third skill this commander's troop takes less normal damage okay so this is to counter smite damage rallies okay and also i guess by extension swarms because you're dealing a lot of normal damage when you're swarming down a flag or something like that again don't know if this is good or not do you take five percent less normal damage or 25 percent less normal damage who knows it's worth noting though that it looks like this part of the skill will work in the open field that's pretty cool the second part does not it says if this commander is serving as a garrison commander whenever their garrison is hit with a basic attack it has a chance to negate all of its current targets health and defense buffs for a certain amount of time now i don't like the way that that skill is worded because it doesn't really explain anything right it says it negates all of the targets health and defense buffs for a certain amount of time i immediately thought cpo emilianus but he actually doesn't have a health buff he has a health bonus so this is not a buff to his army this is on his kit all the time as long as you're leading a rally so is it going to negate his health bonuses or his health buffs because he doesn't have any health buffs and also he shrugs off health and defense debuffs on his third skill you can dispel health and defense debuffs but is a negation to that target's buffs a debuff to the target I, I don't know okay so again we really don't even know if this is good or not it sounds like it could be really good but like if it only applies to stacking health and defense well who stacks health and defense like over time Trajan stacks defense over time is that what they're talking about surely not right so I don't know I don't know what they're thinking I don't know what they're planning here I don't like the wording of this because it seems very unclear but it's what we have got to work with okay moving on to the fourth skill it says increases all healing this commander's troop receives okay so this is what i was talking about it's very similar to richard's fourth skill again is it 10 is it 50 percent? who knows the higher this is that's going to determine how much damage you deal with the active skill okay also that means that you can buff the active skill for the open field use okay this first part of the skill does not specify that you need to be in a garrison to get higher healing factor okay so very good stuff here in terms of open field fighting for this commander if their troops current target is a rallied army whenever their troop uses an active skill the target loses health for a certain amount of time this effect can stack up to a certain number of times and its duration resets whenever it gains another stack okay so this fourth skill debuffs a target's health in a stacking fashion but cpo emilianus can already dispel the health debuffs that are affecting it right so again i suspected that this new archer garrison is to counter cpo emilianus and again we actually i mean it takes less normal damage right so like i mean plus it's archers so it's just i still suspect this will counter cpo but it seems a little bit 
odd that like it's gonna apply a stacking health debuff that cpo can already dispel it's like that seems a little bit weird unless i'm completely reading into this the wrong way you guys can let me know in the comment section below and then finally the expertise skill says this commander's troop deals more counterattack damage if the target troop has fewer units than this commander's troop this counterattack damage bonus will increase so again available for open field use literally every skill on this commander can be used in the open field at least to some extent okay the healing factor works in the field the true damage in aoe works in the field the defense and march speed work in the field the increase to normal damage works in the field the reduction of normal damage taken works in the field the increase to healing works in the field your increased counterattack damage works in the field everything here works in the field except for the stacking health debuff and the chance to negate the target's health and defense debuffs as well so really interesting stuff here especially depending on how much march speed this is like this could be open field viable five target aoe healing true damage could be open field viable absolutely okay and also the last time we saw an open field viable garrison commander was probably artemisia i guess you could argue that a manatore was as well because she worked well with artemisia but yeah i mean it's been a really long time since we saw a archer garrison functional in the open field perhaps this will be the first time in a long time now if i wanted to read into this a little bit more i could look into these sakura petals and say this might be a japanese commander okay that could be really really cool maybe we're going to be seeing a kusunoki prime perhaps who knows he's also an archer garrison commander and we haven't seen him get his prime yet he's also an aoe commander he also has an increase to counterattack damage which we see on the expertise of this newly leaked commander or newly teased commander although i will say the dispel effect on kusunoki is kind of one of the things that make him really cool he's more of a damage over time like a dot dealing commander and so we don't really see that overlap with this new hinted commander but again if we look at those sakura petals and it's an archer garrison who knows maybe it's time for kusunoki prime the last archer release was prime commanders we got herman prime and um i don't know we saw william wallace and cbo emilianos come into the game they weren't prime commanders i think that we will not be getting a new prime for this archer release but maybe also historically the open field commander is the one that is the prime commander right we look at Joan of Arc prime we look at Boudicca prime we look at Herman prime these are all open field commanders whereas with this new reveal here uh we are talking about a garrison commander but typically the developers tease the wheel of fortune commander first are they gonna break the trend is this going to be the wheel of fortune commander is that why all the skills work in the open field it's because this is going to be the open field commander are we going to see an archer garrison defense as the open field wheel of fortune and then the mightiest governor is an archer rally who knows i have no idea what they're doing here this is so weird um i don't know i don't think these sakura petals are a mistake i think this might be a japanese commander guys but now the other thing i want to put out here is that very few of these skills really care about this being an archer commander so the active skill doesn't care about the troop type this second skill does at least for the first part of it here third skill doesn't care it doesn't matter what troop type this is either fourth skill increases healing and debuffs nothing about archers here expertise nothing about archers here so literally we have just one part of one skill literally just the second skill is about archers everything else is not now of course this is like you know a, a sneak peek they could fine tune all this later but what i'm trying to say is like because this is going off of true damage and healing factor like you could literally just put this as any healing garrison to bump, pump these numbers up and like like could you do like a gorgo primary in this commander secondary and then like the, the healing and damage here literally doesn't matter the fact that it's full of infantry because four out of the five skills don't care that it would be infantry right also in some kvks you can change the troop type of a commander and so you could just make this infantry and then boom you pair this with gorgo and now you're lit or you just do gorgo and this commander and then you just have a mixed garrison of infantry and archers you just fill it with that right and there you go that would be i mean i don't know this just seems like it just seems like it's not archer specific at all in many regards unless this is like a, an insane amount of stats here in which case you would want to have that on the kit and if this is insane then i think the rest of the kit might be a little bit weaker but regardless i'm excited to see what comes to rise of kingdoms i really do hope like if i'm being 100 honest with you guys i really hope that we see uh, another goth girl garrison commander for archers i think that would be sick i really 
really want to see that let's see an Artemisia too but really I have no idea what this commander is going to do I think nobody knows how good this is going to be I don't even think Lilith knows how good this is going to be because they didn't tell us the numbers which means they're still ironing that out so let me know what you guys think about this commander in the comment section below do you think some of my predictions are on point do you think that the true damage is going to be broken now and useless later because it won't scale off of anything besides healing factor which historically hasn't been very prominent for Roger Garrison's do you think this is going to be used in the open field quite a bit because it does have a lot of open field potential I'm very excited for that do you think it's going to be a Japanese commander such as Kusunoki Prime I want to hear what you guys think in the comments section below and with that being said while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel it's done it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so the rise of Kingdoms players might see it and subscribe while you're down there we're so close to 75,000 subscribers and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace